Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God, he is so faithful, my brothers and sisters, so faithful that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll never turn his back on you. So faithful that he'll never give up on you or even fail you. He is that faithful. We serve a God that he's not a man that he should not lie. We serve a God, whatever it is that he showed you in a dream or a vision, and whatever it is that he has started in your life right now today, my brothers and sisters, he cannot and will not change his mind about you. No, he won't. Men might give up on you. Men might change their mind. Men might lie to you. But the God we serve, glory be to God, cannot lie to you. Cannot even change his mind at all. That's why I'm always encouraging all my brothers and sisters, that praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, glory, hallelujah, he is still on the throne. He is still on the throne. He's watching down over every last one of us right now. He is still comforting us right now. He is still working behind the scenes right now. He still have us, hallelujah, in the palm of his hands right now. And he's doing amazing things right now. If he was to tell you right now today, my brothers and sisters, you wouldn't even believe what he is doing. You wouldn't even believe what he is up to right now. The teacher is always quiet during a test. But even though he is quiet, you still should be thanking him. Even though he is quiet, you still should be praising him. Even though he's quiet, you still should be rejoicing his name. Even though he is quiet, you still should be glorified and exalt his holy name. And if you have not today, my brothers and sisters, have given Jesus the thanks and praise and glory today, what are you waiting on right now? Open up your heart right now and glorify his name and magnify his name in Jesus' name. I say in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all thanks, we give you all praise, we give you all glory. We just thank you, Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do right now. We thank you, Father God, for this day, the day that you have made. We're so glad to be a part of it and always rejoice in it. We just thank you, Father God, for the great things and new things that you're about to bring to our life right now today, Father God. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message today that's going to keep us full today and keep us satisfied today. There's no other place that I'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, lift you up with thanksgiving and praise and glorify your name and magnify your name and exalt your holy name. Oh, Father God, this is your time. This is your moment, Father God. Oh, Father God, we know that you're about to show up. And, Father God, we know that you're about to show out. Father God, I'm asking now your presence to move to this place. Allow your love to move to this place. Allow your angels to join us in praise and worship right now today. Heavenly Father God, our Father, I'm asking you right now today to fill us up more of the Holy Spirit right now today because we want more of you, Jesus, and we want less of ourselves. Let your words go out and it should not return back void. Heavenly Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Oh, Father God, you are welcome right now today. You're invited right now today to enter to your house right now. To enter right here in your sanctuary right now. To enter right here on your YouTube channel right now, your platform right now. Even in my brother's homes. My brother's life, my sister's home, my sister's life. Father God, you have your way right now. Father God, I'm asking you, Father God, for a favor right now. 
to soften our heart right now, Father God. I'm asking, Father God, to move through us right now. I'm asking, Father God, for healing right now. I'm asking, Father God, for a miracle right now. I'm asking, Father God, for you to do something new in my brother's and my sister's life right now today, Father God. I'm asking you, Father God, for, for healing right now. I'm asking you right now, Father God, for deliverance right now. Father God, I believe, I declare, I decree right now today, God, that someone's ready to get their life over to you today, God. Someone is tired of running today, Father God. Someone's going to be saved today, Father God. Someone won't be worried. They hungry for you right now today, Father God. They thirsty for you right now today, Father God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now to enter to the house of the Lord right now, right here in the sanctuary right now, right here on this YouTube channel right now, on this platform, even in my sister's home, even in my sister's life. Even in my brother's home, my brother's life, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to quiet our thoughts right now, quiet our mind, control our anxiety, control our fears right now, so we can hear your soft, still voice today. Holy Spirit, allow us to catch the Holy Ghost fire through the sermon, through the service right now today. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move like you never moved before right now today. Father God, we just lift you up with thanksgiving and praise, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, because we serve an awesome and a mighty and a powerful God. Heavenly Father God, we're here today to let you know that we're available for praise. We're available for service. We're available for the kingdom. Father God, we're here today to let you know that we need you to do something like you've never done before. Father God, please forgive us for our sin, known and unknown right now. Pray us after your blood right now. Wash us as white as snow right now today, Father God. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that's always in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do, because I can't thank you you enough. That's why I magnify and I shut out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart at you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I brag, that's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him enough. Amen? Amen. I'm going to be real with you, my brothers and sisters. God knows every last one of our hearts. You can fool anybody. You can put on a show from anybody. But you cannot fool God. He already know who want to change before the change even happen. There's too many people always out here saying, oh, I want to change for the better. Oh, I want to change for the best. You can talk the talk, but if you're not walking the walk, my brothers and sisters, that's the only thing you're doing is talking to somebody's head off. But you cannot talk God's head off talking about you ready for a change when you're still doing the same thing. The first thing that you got to do, your pattern have to change before the change even come. Some of y'all is still got the same pattern. If your pattern is the, is the same, they mean that you really don't want to change, my brothers and sisters. You have to change the pattern before the change come. You got to change the pattern. Because you're still doing the same thing and you're still getting the same results. That means there's no way in the world that you want to grow. There's no way in the world that you want to change. You're just talking about it. you got to change the pattern first. And God already knows who want to change the pattern. He knows before the person even changed the pattern, before it even takes place, Jesus already knows because he created every last one of us. He know every last one of our DNA. He know every last one of our blueprint. He know what's better than our own parents know us. So he already know. So again, you can't fool Jesus talking about you won't change when you still deal, going through and still deal with the same pattern. You can't. He already know that. He already know it. 
He knows your heart. Once Jesus knows your heart, the moment when he knows that you're ready to change, you're gonna start, you're gonna stop doing things that you used to do. So your pattern is gonna start first. It's something what you used to do that you don't want to do no more. It's something what you used to like, but you don't like no more. It's something what you you always had a fetish of, but you don't have that fetish anymore. See, that's a pattern. See, the pattern start breaking down. And once the pattern start breaking down, the pattern is not the same anymore, and you don't see the same pattern anymore, the same size anymore, then that's when the change is going to come. That's when the change is going to take place. You got to change what you got to change something in your life if you want change to come. See, the thing about it, everybody don't want change to come. And the reason why they don't want change to come because they still want to continue to do the same thing. And God already know that. That's why he never changes them. He only changed the one that he has chosen, not called. Because the Bible says many are called but only a few are chosen. I'm speaking to some chosen people right now today. This word today is for some chosen people today. This message today is for the chosen one today because Jesus already knew that once he chose you, he handpicked you, my sisters. He handpicked you, my brother. He already know when the change is going to come because right now he is working on you to stop the pattern that you used to do. He's going to remove that old, that old pattern, that old, that old worldly life of yours. He's going to take it away. And once he takes it away, that's when the change is going to come. He did it to me. But I didn't know that was going to happen. But God said, I knew your heart. I knew that you wanted to change, but you weren't going to change until I had to take something from you. You had to go through something. And we all got to go through some kind of type of persecution. Hmm. I was out there selling drugs, persecuting people, hurting people, then yet torturing people. And the same thing I was doing to them, I had to go through the same thing. A lot of y'all right now today, you, that, that is exactly what you're doing. You're persecuting people. And the same people that you're persecuting, you got to go through persecution as well. Amen? What is persecution? It's torment. Mistreatment, abuse, victimization, it's torture. It's torture, that's what it is. A lot of y'all right now today, you're also running from your calling as well. When you're a chosen person, a lot of us, we're going to run. Look at Jonah. Jonah was a chosen person. And what do Jonah did? Jonah took off running. Jonah said, they ain't me. But it doesn't matter how far you run, you still got to come back and still face God because you have been chosen. So no matter where you run to, your calling on your life still going to be there. It doesn't matter where you hide at, where you skip at, where you hop at, where you jump at. You are chosen. You are handpicked by God. When you are chosen, when you are handpicked by God, it doesn't matter where you run to. God still know where you at. He every step of the way. He right there behind you right now say, pick a boo, I see you. I know exactly where you at. Look what Adam and Eve when they ran. They ran and hid from God. God said, where you at? God knew where they was. God knew they was hiding. They was hiding because what? Adam was handpicked. Adam was chosen by God. So God knew exactly where he was. It's like God knew exactly what John was. It's too many of y'all right now today. You're running from your calling. You can't run what God has already anointed over your life, my brothers and sisters. You can't run from that. You can't hide from that. You should be thankful that you were chosen. You should be thankful. Amen? Amen. So let's get into this word. Let's turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 9. And we're going to read verses 1 through 4. It's Acts chapter 9. And we're going to read verses 1 through 4. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say, Amen. 
Amen. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciple. He went to the high, high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus so that, so that he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take, take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Verse 5. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. persecuting. He replied, now get up and go to the city and you will be told what you must do. See, at this point right now, the same way how Saul was persecuting people, Saul about to go through persecuting too. See, he went from Saul to Paul. Because why? Jesus knew that he wanted to change. But he didn't know he wanted to change. But God knew that somewhere in Paul's heart that he didn't want to do what he was doing anymore. God knew that Paul wanted to walk and follow him. God knew that Paul wanted to be righteous. God knew that Paul had an assignment on his life. God knew that Paul had a calling on his life. God knew that he had picked and he chose him. Out of anybody, he chose him for a purpose, my brothers and sisters. That's something that y'all got to realize and know. When God handpicked people, when he chose people, he know what he's doing. See, your past doesn't define what God has called you to do. Even though Saul was hurting people, killing people, but that was his past. But his past still didn't define, hallelujah, what God has called him to do. It didn't stop there. Because why? He was already chosen. Your past doesn't define the favor on your life. Even your past life, it still don't define it because God has already favored you, my sisters. God has already favored you, my brothers. Your past doesn't define the mistakes that you made of your life. It doesn't define that because still God has called you to do something and he has chosen you. So your past does not define it. Your past mistakes does not define it. This thing that you used to do, the things what people are talking about, about you that you did 10 or 20, 30 years ago, it still doesn't define what God has called you to do. It doesn't define it at all. Even though Paul did what he did, even though I did what I did, it still, oh, happy with Jesus, it still didn't define what God has called me to do. What God has called you to do. I remember 10 years ago when the Lord showed me the dream that I was going to be ministering the word. I did the same thing with Jonah that I took on running. I said, now, that ain't me. I was doing the same thing Saul was doing. God said, I handpicked you for a reason. I chose you for a purpose. So he showed it to me the second day. I ran again and said, now, that ain't me. The third day, I took I ran again. And I was about to run again. He called my name. What is you running for? What is you running for? And I said, is that you, Lord? He said, yes. I chose you. I handpicked you. I have favor, or help me, Jesus, over you. Over you, son. I said, okay, God, what you want me to do? He said, I want you to eat my word and study it. And I will give you the rest of the information, what I want you to do. I know that you was persecuting people. I know that you was living wrong out there in life. But I still chose you. I had my hand on you the whole time, watching over me. I was protecting you. Just like I did Saul. I had my hand over Saul. I was watching over Saul. It was that favor. It was over soul life. It was that favor 
that was over your life, my sister. It was that favor that was over your life, my brother. It was that favor that was over my life. But I still had to go through some persecution. I still had to get tortured because I tortured people. I still had to go through some mistreatment because I mistreated people. I still had to go through some abuse because I abused people. I still had to go through some torture because I tortured people. I did the same thing. I went from being called one man to serving Minister LT. Paul was called Saul, hallelujah, before he came Paul. He was Saul in the past, but in the present future, God knew his name was going to be Paul. See, he always thought his name was going to be Saul, but he had no idea that God has already changed his name to Paul. Because God knew his heart. God knew that Saul was not wanting that life no more. God knew that Saul had to change his pattern. But God had to change the pattern so the change can come. God had to change my pattern for the change can come. God had to change your pattern, my sister, for the change can come. God had to change your pattern, my brother, for the change, for the change to come. God knew your heart. God had to take my mother away from me for order me to change. But God knew he had to do that for order to change to come. Because my pattern was I would stay as long as I had my mother right there. Even though my father had passed when I was 17. As long as my mother right there, I was comfortable. God said, okay, I got to take something from this because he got the same pattern. And that, if I take that pattern away, then the change is going to come. God had to take the pattern away from Saul for the change can come. God had to take the pattern away from you, my brothers, for the change can come. God had to take the pattern away from you, my sisters, for the change to come. It was already there. We just couldn't see it. God knew exactly what he was doing because why? You was chosen and you was handpicked by Heavenly Father God. Saul was handpicked. Saul was chosen by God. And he still didn't define what he did in the past, what God has called him to do. Do you see how amazing God is? Everything Paul did, everything I did, it still didn't define what God saw in you. It still didn't define what God saw in Saul. It still didn't define what God saw in me. My past did not determine my calling. My past did not de determine the anointing and the favor over my life, over your life, my sister, over your life, my brother, over soul life. It still didn't define it because God had a bigger purpose. It's the point I make. When God has a bigger purpose over your life, my brother and sisters, it doesn't matter what you did in the past. God is looking at the purpose he has called you to do, chose you to do, and handpicked you to do. God knows your heart. God knows your heart. God has a defined purpose for you. And if you truly believe that God has a defined purpose for you, Give him some thanks right now. Give him some praise right now. Give him some glory right now. And if you love what you just heard, go and hit Jesus' like button. Hit the subscribe button too as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, I was praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything got in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is Wiggles.alt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. 
I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving in the CLT. I want y'all to stay blessed. In Jesus' name, I love every last one of y'all. Amen.